Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's look at the South African transfer frenzy that is currently going on. So much movement at the moment between South African unions as all the teams, or well, particularly the Rainbow Cup teams, look to shape their squads ahead of the Rainbow Cup in April. So we're seeing a lot of rumours, a lot of potential departures, a couple of player movements within the, across the unions. And we've seen some high profile players not only being linked to unions but having already been confirmed. Um, so just going to have a look at sort of the top five players that we're sort of seeing moving within South Africa or kind of potentially coming back to South Africa. Before we look at them, please do subscribe to the channel, smash a like on the video as well. We'll obviously keep you up to date if any of these big moves sort of go through and stuff like that. We're going to start doing a weekly sort of roundup of the world news and stuff like that. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you never miss what's going on. Right. And first up is Sia Khaleesi is expected to be announced by the Sharks tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, we know that he's leaving. I mean, it's pretty much been the worst kept secret ever. Since the acquisition of the Sharks um, by MVM Holdings, it has been, pretty much been known that Sia Khaleesi, who's already signed with um, Rock Nation, one of the entities within the whole, um, consortium that they want to bring in Sia Khaleesi. We're talking about the most marketable man in rugby right now. He's the face of Adidas. He's doing all these different commercials. He's signed lots of big brands, you know, likes of Red Bull, you know, and a, a black springbok winning captain the marketability is incredible let alone the actual rugby part of it he brings and he's become under a lot of scrutiny because he didn't have the best super rugby unlocked or the curry cup and i think that he'll know that he's been a bit slow to recover from injury but at the end of the day he's a class player and having him at the sharks will only help you know we're talking about leadership we're talking about the fact that he's been linking up with some of the major springboks like Lakanya am you know stikon was is playing some really really good rugby so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, but it is expected that he will be announced officially tomorrow. Um, Western Province has already confirmed that he will be leaving. John Dobson made the confirmation on Sunday before Sia Khaleesi penned a letter to the Western Province thanking them for what they did for his career, basically saying he arrived a boy and now he's left a man. Um, and look, I think it's the right pop move for all parties. I think he's under a lot of scrutiny under the Western Province. I think he's got so much sort of stuff happening in and around that I think a move for him somewhere else is probably the right idea. A fresh start, get him away from the sort of the stinky shit that is the Western Province, get him into a side like the Sharks, where, you know, they've really revived a lot of careers. Sigur Mosinoche has looked fantastic since moving. And hopefully Zia Khaleesi can refine his best rugby whilst playing at a, at a union making some big strides. Um, after Zia Khaleesi, we've also seen some rumours that Lima Supoaga is being linked to the Stormers. A story came out yesterday saying that um, the ex-New Zealand um, or ex-All Black fly half, who's been playing a lot of rugby, or who's been playing for the Wasp and actually playing quite a lot of rugby at full back, his contract's coming up to an end soon and, you know, trying to decide where they're going. And there was a rumor that Western Province were looking to try and lure him down to the Western Cave. How a union which couldn't even organize, you know, a stadium tour for the American consortium without trying to charge too much money, which is one of the main reasons that apparently went um, fell through, you know, are now going to try and bring in a, an all-black cap fly half. Who knows? I mean, they didn't have the money to... I mean, apparently they did everything they could to try and keep Sia Khaleesi. They're apparently going to lose a couple more players. Funny, I mean, administratively... It, they're horrendous, and now they're being linked to Lima Superwaga. Look, it's very unlikely. In fact, it's actually been reported that he's already committed to a two-year deal to Lyon in France, which does sound a lot more sort of up his alley and a lot more realistic in terms of what, what we probably will see. But look, I think the, the good thing for Western Province fans is the fact that they've identified that they need a fly half and that Damien Willemser is going to have his future at full back. What happens when um, Warwick Kalunk comes back from injury well, we don't know. We're going to have to wait and see what happens there. But it is good to see that they've identified that they need a genuine fly half. Um, John Dobson spoke about how big of an impact current Bosch is and how they've made him made, made a mistake with trying to get Bambi Williams to become a fly half. Um, so interesting times for the Western Province, which is not going to be helped by the fact that Jean Augustus, the many people touting him as the heir to be for Dwayne for New England, very young, very physical player from the Western Province, Rumour has it that he has actually signed a deal to go and play in the Premiership in the UK, signing with Northampton Saints, um, which would be a massive, massive loss. In the back of Lugan Sia Khaleesi, to have lost John Augustus as well, where they were going to potentially be going into the Rainbow Cup with a loose trio of Khaleesi, Augustus, and Peace Dev Tatoi. I mean, that's an incredible loose trio. And suddenly it looks like Peace Dev Tatoi might be low manning it. Um, you know, also um, rumours that Yaku Katia could be on the move. So not a very good time to be a Western Province supporter where, you know, You've lost, like you, you've lost your your captain. You're potentially losing your best, one of your best players here, one of the most upcoming promising players, and then your only sort of good news is a is a wild link to a New Zealand flower hub, which is probably not going to happen. 
Um, for me, Juan Augustus would suit a move overseas. I mean, he's so big, he's so physical, he does the basics right. He would suit Northern Hemisphere rugby, to be honest. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that is true. Another interesting story is Marvin Ori, after leaving the Lions, is apparently actually struggling to find a club and now talking to the Cheetahs. John Dobson has also confirmed that he's on the potential Western Province radar. Um, but basically, you know, the 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 deal with the Lions fell through. Um, the Lions wanted to keep him. I don't think he was happy with the terms that they were offering him and then thus decided to move. And I reckon that he was probably hoping to try and secure an overseas move where he, rec- where he thought he was going to earn a lot of money. And that hasn't quite happened, which is now suddenly why he's tra- talking to the Cheetahs in the Western Province. And I'll obviously be very surprised if the Cheetahs can afford to be giving him a, a better contract than what the Lions were offering. Um, if that's the case, then obviously the Lions thought that he is somebody they can actually afford to lose. Um, and I was a little bit 50-50 when he went, to be honest. I mean, yes, we lost a very experienced player who's played for the Springboks, but he is a most, some, one of the most frustrating players to watch because he d- has such good games and then makes such frustrating errors. So it'll be interesting to see um, where he settles down. And if he ever wants to sort of get himself back on the Bok radar, he needs to be playing week in, week out at a top side. I'm not sure the Chiefs would be the best side to do it, given the, the uncertainty of where they are actually going to be playing. Um, next season. And then Johan Gersen, a, a rumor that's kind of gone a little bit dry, was supposed to be signing um, for the Bulls. Talks about a three-year contract. There hasn't been an update in about a, sort of a week or two. Um, it was expected that him and Francois Hochard were going to be announced. Francois Hochard now suddenly having a rethink, potentially looking at getting British citizenship or English citizenship. So now maybe three thinking to move back to Loftus. But Johan Gersen is, at this stage, expected to arrive at Loftus before the Rainbow Cup. And he will be invaluable in terms of adding a Long, uh, more sort of long-term option and fly hard. He covers full back as well. A nice utility back. And Jake White's just building a team of stars. And having someone like Johan Hulsen back in the country, if you can get him playing to the sort of um, rugby that made him, that sort of we saw when, when he burst onto the scene, it would just only boost what is already an incredibly strong Bulls side. So yeah, some very interesting rumors all around in terms of the South African transfers. I think there does need to be a lot of movement. I think we're looking at unions, which are hopefully going to have a bit of a cash injection with Rainbow Cup. Sharks are getting a cash injection from a, a, a takeover. So I think we will be seeing a lot of movement um, to Durban. We're still going to see a lot of movement with the Bulls. And the Western Province and the Lions need to catch up if they want to try and compete for the Rainbow Cup because both of them, whilst they've got some decent squads, could really use a couple of, of marquee signings um, before the beginning of the Rainbow Cup. Let me know which players you would like to see move where. Any potential players those four Rainbow Cup sides should be looking at. Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.